Hey everyone, in this tutorial we're going to be going into a bit more detail when constructing with building gen, covering things like the tiled roofs, balconies, accessories, and material adjustments. We'll be adjusting the outline of our building to generate a nice double terraced house, similar to what you can find in the sampler content. Let's start with our basic iBuilding config sampler template from the content manager and choose the white plaster style. I'm going to start customizing from the ground floor, so I'll hide the second floor in the scene manager for now. I'll use the middle mouse button to select the separate wall sections that I don't want, then delete them, and replace them with wall sections that conform to the outline we want. You can use the copy paste functionality as well to copy one section to another. I can copy a single wall section and paste it to multiple places by multi-selecting before pasting. From there, I'll set about adding some pillars at the corners by using the appropriate pillar placement button in the building gen window. After that, the outline and structure of the ground floor is now consistent on both buildings, so let's move on to the second floor. On a reference building, you'll notice a trim around the building between the ground and second floors. To recreate this, we can duplicate the current roof level and move it down later. To find the same exterior trim, we can search for prop by template pack and find the trim.i prop that matches with that on a reference building. When we drag it in, it will replace the current taller section of the roof ledge. From there, you can use the same copy-paste process to ensure the entire ledge is replaced. We can then search for prop by template pack again to find the shorter pillars to replace those on the edges. After that, we have our completed trim layer, which we can proceed to move down two levels so that it will sit between the ground and second floor. I can then just add in some additional pillars to the corners to make it consistent with our reference building. Next, we need to find the balcony railing to replace the walls for our second level balcony. Ensure here that you do not retain the child elements, which in this case is the window frame. Proceed to copy paste to get all of the railing sections needed, and then add in the relevant solid wall and window elements where needed. Repeat the process to find the properly sized pillar to complete the railing, and then add the relevant full size pillars to the edges with walls. Second level is now complete, so let's move on to the roof. I'll start by repeating the same process shown earlier to place the correctly sized walls and pillars and delete the unwanted overhang over our balcony. Once we have the structure outline correct, we can continue to replace the solid walls with our proper railings. One more thing that we need to do before moving on to material adjustment is replace our ground floor front windows with the elements that have additional basement hopper windows. Again, we're replacing the entire front section, so we don't need to keep the child elements. Okay, we've completed the structure outline. It's time to move on to the material replacement and adjustments. You can see that our current door has a number of child elements. To replace the actual door itself, I can select the relevant child element and click and drag in the replacement I want from the content manager. I'll then proceed to click and drag in my preferred window frames directly to the existing ones in the viewport. This will replace all instances of that same material in our structure. This particular material includes a child element slot for different curtain variations. Note here that when you drag any one of these to the child element slot, it will only replace the materials of that specific window. This way, you can give each window a slightly different appearance for more variety. Next, we can select our window and search prop material once again to find the green plaster style. This material can be applied to windows, walls, doors, and pillars, so you'll need to apply it separately each time to each different element. The next material focuses on the trim or frame color of an element. You can see the change when we apply it to each of the different elements.
Each one has a dedicated area of its respective mesh that can accept dedicated frame or trim materials. We can continue with the same search material by prop to apply the relevant floor material to our outdoor floor surfaces. When it comes to accessories like the street lamp, you can see that there are multiple child elements, so be sure to search specifically under the one that you would like to change. Here I'm applying a material that simulates light. There are also various elements like plants, signs, and street lamps that are included as well. To include them as part of your build, click and drag them to the child element space. From there, you can refine the positioning, then multi-select and hold control while you click and drag to duplicate both items. You can then copy and paste them to other floor elements as well. Okay, looks pretty good so far. For a finishing touch, let's look at how to construct a roof next. You can find a collection of roof tiles for assembly in this French style content pack. Under the wall folder, you'll find a plethora of wall options and searching roof in the same folder will present a number of roof options as well. You can click and drag the roof elements to the proper railing space according to their naming conventions. Left and right will have slants on their respective sides, and they connect together along the corners. The quickest way to assemble your roof is to copy and paste the right roof elements to the relevant corners. Then do the same for the left roof element. When you've covered all of the corners, then you can add in the middle element where needed. However, we'll end up with this tricky little inverted corner area where we need to do something a bit different. Start by selecting the adjacent roof element, then adding in a pillar in the relevant corner. A dummy will appear to indicate where you're placing it. From there, simply drag in the dedicated roof pillar prop from the content manager to complete the roof. This building is utilizing a different type of roof tile. As you can see, the corner elements here are not at a 90 degree angle, therefore you can use this 45 degree angle roof tile instead. In this next scenario, I've completed the roof tiles, however there is still a gap in the middle here. To fill this up, you can simply hold control and click and drag a floor element from below to fill this gap. Naturally, you normally wouldn't want hardwood on your roof, so we can once again go into the materials and find the relevant one to apply. This pack also includes a number of different smaller roof styles, along with unique styles for use with courtyards, gates, or greenhouses. We encourage you to try it out for yourself to see all of the cool combinations that you can come up with. That's it for this video guys, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.